ColourPop recently launched their festival collection and with names like Insomniac and Electric Daisy, do you really think I could pass up an EDC themed collection? I don't think so. Hi everyone, Shireen here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking all about the ColourPop festival collection. I picked up some of the items, obviously not the whole thing because that's a lot, but this is the first ColourPop collection that I've genuinely been interested in in the past two years. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys swatches, a demo, how they wear, removal, the whole package. So let's just get into it. Oh, side note. Yes, I know not all of the products are EDC themed or named after EDC, but I got the ones that are. The whole thing is just like festival themed. I love it. It's neon. It's fun. It's glittery. It's me. It's just me as a makeup collection. First up, we have the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Insomniac. This is a neon pink. Then we have the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Electric Daisy. This is a neon green. I don't know why this one says BFF on it because on the website it doesn't. And breakage in 3, 2, 1. Boom. Yeah, don't twist these up too much because they can definitely break. That is my bad. Side note, technically neither of these liners are intended for use in the immediate eye area, so use at your own risk. Moving on to pressed pigment, we have Sandbar, which is a matte neon pink. This is the only color from what I've ordered that is not new to the festival collection. Sandbar is also in the Oolala La palette. Now onto pressed glitters, we have Boombaya, which is a vivid orange. Hungry Ghost is an opal press glitter with a gold and copper duochrome shift. I ended up putting Sandbar and the two press glitters into this empty ColourPop quad that I had from years ago. Honestly, it's kind of perfect. Now I'm just missing one more and you know what that means. Time to make another ColourPop order. Last but not least, we have the glitterly obsessed body glitter in Disco Lady. This is a holographic glitter. By the way, this one is actually not from the festival collection, but it might as well have been because hello, this is such a fun festival glitter. Here's what they look like under studio lights, and here's what they look like in natural lighting. I'm gonna start off by priming my lids with the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer. I am in the shade Fair. I honestly don't love this for prepping for eyeshadow. I don't find it to be the best. It actually gets a little bit dry and patchy and sometimes it'll honestly make my eyeshadow crease. With whatever is remaining on the brush, I'm also gonna lightly take this right along the lower lash line to conceal and prime. So the first thing I'm going in with today from the ColourPop Festival collection is this liner right here. This is Electric Daisy. I'm gonna run this through my waterline. The reason why I'm doing this first is because I've noticed that when I tend to work with eyeshadows and then do my waterline last, it's not as effective because I have shadow built up in my waterline. So when I go to put in the liner, it's just not as pigmented. So we're just gonna do this first and then move on to eyeshadow. Next, I'm gonna go in with Sandbar, which is this super neon pink right here. This is a pressed pigment and I've never really worked with any of ColourPop's pressed pigments, so I'm excited to try this. When I did the swatch, it was super pigmented. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this up on my dirty blending brush, but it's okay, I tried to clean it. Got a little bit, let's pack this on the lids. You'll notice that I didn't set my primer today, or well, concealer. I usually do because I do have oily eyelids, but for this, I really want the pigment to be as 
pigments in as possible. So we're just gonna pack it on without setting anything. I'm only taking this color in about halfway across the crease. I find that this is more flattering for my eye shape, which is almond. When I bring it in all the way, it kind of starts to make my eyes look a bit more closed and not as defined. So just halfway. I just picked up some more and I'm going to pat, pat, pat and really build up this color. I mean, it's already super pigmented, but I just want to make it more punchy. Dang, she is pigmented. Wow, this is beautiful. So now I'm just going to begin to blend using these small circular motions. When I do windshield wiper motions, especially with something like this where you want to keep the pigment, those windshield wiper motions are going to take away the pigment. So I find that these smaller circular strokes are really great when you're working with more pigmented colors. How many times can a girl say pigmented in one sentence? Oh my god. I'm blending upwards because I don't want to pull this color down onto the crease. You'll see why in a sec. I've got some skipping right here, but this is always an issue for me. No matter what eyeshadow I use, I don't know why. This area right here, and it's only this side too, it just skips and the color never packs onto there. I don't get it. Is anybody else like that? I feel like it's just me. Otherwise, the rest of this blend is looking good. Let's move on. All right, now is the fun part and the part where I may potentially screw up. So keep your fingers crossed that I got this. I'm going to be drawing a daisy or like flower on my lid. So I'm going to start off with this part right here. We're just going to make a half circle and then fill it in. Also, just letting you know right now, sorry if I go out of focus. When I do things like this, I need to be like this close to the mirror. Otherwise, I can't see what I'm doing and I mess up. So just letting you know. All right, there we go. We've got our little half circle looking thing going on. It's not perfect, but it works. Next, we're gonna draw the petals right here. Side note, Insomniac is such a pretty color. It's so easy to blend. It's creamy, it's beautiful. I love it. Pray for me and my broken liner that I will get through this and it'll be okay. This tip is literally about to fall out. Oh, I screwed up when I was doing swatches. I had this open too much and it broke. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to make a rough guideline of where the petals are gonna end. And then I'm gonna go back and fill them in, kind of like a coloring book. Like you wanna make an outline and then just fill it in. For this outer corner, basically treat it as wing liner. You wanna extend the line out from this end part of your eye towards the tail end of your brow and then just connect it to the top of that petal shape. All right, so I've got my outline. I'm just gonna fill this in and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm noticing that I'm having a hard time swiping the product up and down. So I'm just going left and right and that's working a lot better for me. And I just lost my liner, cool. Well, time to twist this up a little bit. <laughs> like it literally just fell in the sink. That is disgusting, I will not be using that. All right, now that I've got the color packed and on the lid, I'm gonna blend it out using a small eyeliner brush. Something like this is gonna be perfect. This is the AOA Studio E134 brush. You just wanna use back and forth patting motions, but also slightly press the product around at the same time. Don't move it around too much though, because you don't wanna make any sort of streaking effects. You just want a nice blend. Okay, I think this is as good as we're going to get with the blending. The parts up here where I made the outlines, I put a lot of product. So it's just really thick and it's kind of like gooped on there right now. It's really hard to blend it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I think it's fine. I mean, it's only when you're like super close up that you can notice, but from far away, it's okay. Next, I'm going to go back in with a sandbar. We're just going to pick up a little bit on that same brush and smoke out the lower lash line. For this, I like to pinch the brush so all of the hairs are more condensed 
and then just run it along the lower lash line. This way you get more of a precise smoked out effect instead of it getting all over your lower lash line, your eye bags, your lips, your feet. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just like gets too low. You could also use a smaller brush if you wanted to, but a lot of my brushes are dirty right now, so we're being multifunctional. And then just make sure you connect this to the upper lash line. Looking good to me. I really like this. So we have two options right now. I can either leave this as is, or I can go over it with a glitter. So if I was to go over it with a glitter, I would either do Hungry Ghost, which is this beautiful one right there, or I would use that Literally Obsessed in Disco Lady, which is this one right here. This has just all of these beautiful multicolored glitters in it, different sizes. We've got big, medium, small. I really, really love this one, but it is so hard to get off and it smells so bad. Like, I don't understand why these things smell so bad. I've yet to come across a glitter gel that smells amazing. This would be like my ideal, but because of how hard it is to remove, I'm gonna pass on that. I'm thinking of adding glitter to the inner corner though. Let's try that and then We'll make a decision from there if we want it on the lids or not. My nails are a little bit long right now, and I know I'm not going to get a super precise application with them if I use my fingers, so I'm going to try using the pressed glitters with a brush. I'm just going to use this brush right here. This is a really dense, small brush. This is the E03 from Pixie. I don't even know if this is going to work, honestly. <laughs> We're just going to try and wing this, so let's try to pick some up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that definitely worked. Look at that. Well wow. packed. Actually, maybe a little bit too much. I'm just gonna pop this right here in the inner corner. Wow, that is stunning. I love how it shifts orange and gold. Depending on the lighting, it just looks so different, but it looks beautiful in every lighting condition. Plus, it just really works with this whole color scheme. So I think, I think we're good for this eye. I'm just gonna leave this as is. Moving on to the next eye, I'm gonna do something different. I'm going to keep it more simple for this one. I want it to be an asymmetrical fun look. If you want, you can recreate this on this side and just have it match, but that's not the vibe I'm going for today. I'm going to pick up sandbar again and we're just going to do the same thing, like smoke it out, upper and lower lash line. I mean not upper lash line, the crease. So I'm just going to pick some up and go to town. Do you see what I mean about that creasing by the way? Like, do you see <laughs> that concealer creasing? Ugh, I'm not about it. So what I'm gonna do is mainly concentrate this on the crease, the outer corner, lower lash line, and then with whatever is remaining on the brush, I'm just gonna pack it on the lid so we have a wash of color. And now, of course, time to blend. I swear, this blends out like a dream. It's so easy, like, done. I'm done. Look at that. Beautiful. The reason why I wanted a wash of color right here is because I'm gonna go in with another pressed glitter. I'm gonna go in with Boom Baya. This is gonna make the look look more cohesive because it's gonna tie in this little glitter element with this side. I'm just gonna take that same brush and dip into Boom Baya, this gorgeous orange, and we're just gonna pack this on the lid. I'm mainly gonna concentrate this on the inner corner and take it out to the center of the lid. Oh, that is beautiful! Wow, these glitters, so pretty. So now I'm just taking it upwards a little bit just to blend it out into the crease. And then same thing with this edge. You wanna take it out so that it kinda starts to blend into this pink right here. To really tie everything together, I'm gonna go back in with Hungry Ghost and pop that in the inner corners. Wow, you guys, when I pick up Hungry Ghost, it picks up so much. Like when I did that with Boom Bai ah, it didn't pick up as much as it did with Hungry Ghost. This one's definitely easier to work with. Look at that, instantly so much glitter. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I am clearly in love. I'm gonna take this down slightly on both sides of the inner corners. I just really love the way that the glitter looks like that. Kind of like cascading down a little bit. 
If you don't want to mess around with eyeliner, if you're not really a good drawer or anything like that, you could definitely skip this and just recreate this on both eyes. I think that'll look really pretty for festivals as well. I'm gonna pop on some lashes, finish up the rest of my face, and I will be right back. This is the most satisfying feeling ever, am I right? I love taking off lashes. Let's see how easily this glitter will come off my eyes. I'm gonna try removing the glitters on this side with the Garnier Micellar Water and then this side with the Drunk Elephant Slay Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. I'm just gonna press and hold this for 30 seconds and then wipe it off. I don't know about this, y'all. This is smudging everywhere. I thought this was gonna be easy to take off the eyes. I guess not. Oh wow. <laughs> Literally a glitter mess. Like, look at this right now. There's glitter all over my eyes. And it even went up to my brows. I know that's normal with glitters, but usually it's not this excessive. Like, I don't have this much left over when I take it off with my cellar water. Hmm, interesting. Let's try Slay. So I'm actually gonna go back into this eye with Slay and see if it'll be easier to remove the glitters. So with Slay, what you wanna do is just apply it to your skin just dry, rub it in real good, and then make sure to wash it off with warm water. Oh wow, instantly, I can already tell like that glitter is really coming off. It's like on my fingers, it's definitely getting off. So with these glitters, since they are not biodegradable, I don't wanna be washing them down the sink. What I'm gonna do instead is just take a cotton round and wipe it off that way. Once I get all the glitters off, then I'll go in and rinse with water and pat dry my face. If you want, you could even put some water on the cotton round and just take it off that way. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. I just wet it a little bit and now I'm going to remove everything. Oh yeah, this is definitely taking off a lot more glitter than my cellar water. There's definitely still glitter on my eyes, like obviously, like look at that, it's just, it's everywhere. But that is common with glitter. I don't expect glitter to ever come off 100%. But the fact that it was just spreading around and clumping and not coming off with micellar water kind of concerns me. Cause that's never happened to me with glitters. All right, now let's take off this eye with Slay. I'm thinking this one might be a little bit trickier because I have that neon line. Oh, wow, that is really coming off easily. I was thinking that because of that liner, since it was just more like, it's not glitter, you know, it's liner, it's thick. Wow, I am impressed. I honestly thought it would be harder to take off that glitter. Like, I thought it wasn't gonna budge. But look at that, it's like, <laughs> it's coming off so easily. I just got another damn cotton round, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Just wipe everything off. Okay, I don't know what is up with... Ooh, stabbed myself nearly. What is up with this lash line situation? Huh, I wonder why that's not coming off easily. Oh, you know what it is? It's lash glue. Lash glue is so annoying to get off. Okay, I still have a lot of glitter actually on this side but it did for the most part come off easily. I'm just gonna go back in with one more round of Slay and try to remove all of this excess glitter. Going in with that second pass definitely helped a lot. Obviously, there's still some glitter here and there. Like I said, with glitter, you're never gonna get 100% of it off, so that's fine. This is really, really good to me. Okay, so final thoughts on removal. Not that easy. <laughs> Unless you're using Slay, and when you use Slay, go in with it twice because the first layer is basically just to kind of like start the removal process 
and the second is more of that deep cleaning to really get in there and remove the glitters. My cellar water just did not cut it for me. A drugstore alternative for Slay is Pixie's Double Cleanse. It's another really great makeup remover that is oil-based and is so gentle and effective. Let's talk about these products, shall we? I want to start off with the ones that I don't love. So the first one is this one right here. This is the Electric Daisy Cream Gel Liner. This one I found to be really hard to work with. When I was swatching it, it was really patchy and I really had to take my time building it up. It wasn't one swipe intense pigment. And when I was doing that whole flower look, I was really struggling with it. It got really patchy, really hard to blend. I know that I applied a lot of product, but it was still really hard to work with. I do still really love this color though. It's a really pretty neon green. I could see myself using it in the waterline or on the upper lash line, winging it out and then blending it out with an angled liner brush. I think that would look really pretty. For more detailed work, this just ain't it. If I was to redo that whole flower look, I would either use a cream sort of paint, not necessarily a gel liner, it would just be a lot easier and smoother to work with. Or if I was gonna use this, I'd probably take Duraline or something like that just to sheer it out and make it more liquidy. The next one I don't love is Boombaya. This one has a bunch of smaller glitters in it, like there's no medium or bigger sized glitters, they're all small or just very fine. It also applies very patchy. I had a hard time getting this to have a smooth application. When I was swatching it, it was just really patchy, hard to build up. And even on my eyes, even though it did glide beautifully and end up looking really nice, it just, it's so different than Hungry Ghost. Hungry Ghost is a lot more chunky and it's easier to apply, it's very smooth, there's no streaking, there's no patchiness. <laughs> These two are night and day for me. This one's like, mm, no thank you. This one I love. Like, it's so beautiful. And I love that depending on what lighting it's in, it has a different shift to it. So in this sort of lighting where it's studio lights, I notice that it's more rose gold slash gold, but then once you take it outside in natural lighting, it has this really cool blue shift to it. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before and it's so magical. You guys know I love my chunky glitters, so this is perfection. The next one that I really, really love is Sandbar. This is so pigmented in just one swipe. It also blends like a dream and is so beautiful. I absolutely love this one. Now, this was supposed to come in a neon compact, but my guess is that ColourPop ran out because they ended up sending me this one. So this is just a white one, which, you know, I actually kind of like. It matches my aesthetic better. I really love black and white, as you guys can probably tell. So thanks, ColourPop. I also really love the Insomniac Cream Gel Liner. This one is very easy to blend, super smooth, creamy, just everything, but this one is not. They're so different, it's crazy. I just, I really love this one. Absolutely beautiful, highly recommend it. Now for the last thing, the Glitterly Obsessed in Disco Lady. I have a love-hate for this. I hate it because of the smell. It smells like a really strong, chemical-y smell. And that goes for a lot of glitter gels I've noticed. I have yet to come across one that does not have this terrible smell. It's also really hard to get off, like harder than any glitter I have ever tried. The good thing about that is that once you put it on, it doesn't really budge, it stays like all day. One time I applied this on my chest and I could not get it off for two days. Like that's how well it stays. But it's also such a pain to get off. Like I was there scrubbing and it would barely come off. So for that reason, I don't really see myself using this on my face. I don't want to be tugging at my skin super hard and causing wrinkles. Now I do love this because of all of the arrangement of glitters in it. We've got my chunky glitters in here, which I love. And then there's also medium sized ones, smaller ones and they're all just so iridescent. They're beautiful. I really, really love this for that reason. I still think that I would use this. I mainly got it for EDC, so I'll probably still end up using it, but just on my body. I don't know. We'll see. If you guys have tried any of these products, leave a comment down below and let me know which ones you've tried, if you like them, and also if you have tried the Glitterly Obsessed, please let me know how you take this off because I am struggling. So that is it for my ColourPop Festival Collection makeup look and video. 
Drop a comment down below letting me know which item from the ColourPop Festival collection is your favorite. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.